Hi everyone! From the previous video, you have learned about the history of Philippine literature. For our video lecture for today, we will learn about Philippine Literary Canon under Chapter 3. We will start with the definition of the word canon first. So, what is canon? Well, basically, I'm not referring to the canon that you are thinking right now. So, this is not the canon that I am referring to. When we say canon in the field of the literature, it means that this is the collection of words considered representative of a certain genre in period. So, basically, this is like a compilation of uh, one-of-a-kind works. So next is, let's define canonical authors. So if we have canon, of course we have canonical authors. Again, do not forget, canon is the compilation of um, each literary text that is a representative of a certain genre. So canonical authors, so these are writers whose works have been well appreciated and considered representatives of certain genres of literature. So basically, canonical authors are the writer of canon. Now let's find out what happened to the Philippine literature during the American period. Uh, basically, American period have left a big impact to our culture as well to our tradition um, because of the educational system that they have really um, established. So these are the two significant developments during the American period. So the first one is the free public education wherein knowledge and information made accessible to almost all Filipinos. Those who availed of this education through college were able to improve their social status and joined a good number of educated masses who became part of the country's middle class. So even before, education is really important to someone's life because uh, it will open uh, better opportunities for you. Second is the use of English as medium of instruction in all levels. It introduced Filipinos to Anglo-American modes of thought, culture, and life ways. So one of the things that um, Americans have really made sure is that the Filipinos will use English language as a medium of instruction in teaching as well as communication. So no wonder why we can speak uh, two languages wherein we could speak Filipino and English as well. When the University of the Philippines was founded in 1908, an elite group of writers in English began to exert influence among the culture. The UP Writers Club, founded in 1926, had stated that one of its aim uh, was to enhance and propagate the language of Shakespeare. So basically, they're about to use English language to all the literary texts that they are about to produce. In 1925, um, we have Paz Marquez Benitez. Uh, she have written Dead Stars, wherein it was published and was made the landmark of the maturity of the Filipino writer in English. So the moment that she have written that story, uh, that is the point wherein the Filipino writers have seen that, oh, okay, so we can now create our own uh, stories that are free from influence of the Spaniards and Americans. Uh, so that is the period wherein they have the freedom to choose whether what topic uh, would they like to write about. Now the combination of writing in the borrowed tongue while dwelling in Filipino customs and traditions earmarked the literary output of major Filipinos fictionists in English during the American period. So it is kind of difficult for our authors and writers back then to write um, using two languages. But they were able to push through. So we have here great works during this time. So these are uh, the major novels of the period, such as The Filipino Revel by Maximo Calao. So it says Maximo Calao. And uh, Juan Laya's His Native Soil. Our discourses on cultural identity, nationhood, and being Filipino done in, in, in the English language. Stories such as How My Brother Leon Brought Home a Wife by Manuel Arguilla scan the scenery as well as the folkways of Ilocandia. Uh, we also have um, 
Children of the Ash Covered Loam by Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez, also known as NVM Gonzalez, which present the panorama of Mindoro in all its customs and traditions while configuring its characters in the human dilemma of nostalgia and poverty. During the early American period, seditious plays were mounted as well, so our authors or our writers during that time, they did not just focus with writing short stories and poems, they also uh, did some theatrical plays. So, notable Zar Solista, so we have Juan Abad for Tanika Languinto, we also have Aurelio Palentino for Ngayon uh, Bukas, Sorry, for kahapon ngayon at bukas. We also have Juan Matapang Cruz for Hindi Ako Batay. And then another or other equally remarkable Zerzuela stage during the period, we have Juan Crisostomo Sotos Alam Dios, Severino Reyes Walang Sugat, Patricio Mariano's Anak ng Dagat. The novels in Tagalog, Biloko, Hiligaynon, and Sukuanan also developed during the period because they were aided largely by the steady publication of weekly magazines. So since um, the weekly magazines are regularly uh, publishing uh, these novels, so it means that uh, our authors or writers during that time gained the uh, a large number of audiences so they have gained a big number of readers because again um, the publication or the publishing house of weekly magazines eh, are regularly publishing these novels poetry flourished in all regions of the country during the american period so of course we also have poetry and since um, we have a weekly publication uh, poetry as well have gained a big number of audience uh, yes we have discussed that um, the filipino writer the filipino writers uh, during this time they're really having a hard time in um, using uh, the English language and Filipinos, but uh, they really made sure that um, whatever dialect uh, a certain Filipino is using, they can still uh, read poetry or poems and short stories because our writers, uh, they were writing it uh, using the dialect. So they are using Inokano, uh, Hilikainon, uh, they have... Um, different version for each of regions in the country so that other uh, readers that are not English speaker can still understand the, uh, the poetry or the poem that they are writing. So this is the end of our discussion. So thank you so much for listening. I hope that you had learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your teachers. So, so see you again to our next uh, video lecture. Have a nice day and um, always stay safe. Take care.